Hello! Happy Halloween! I thought it'd be kind of fun to tell you two of my, well they're not really ghost stories, let's call them creepy things stories. So I've always been the kind of person who's been on the fence about like ghosts or you know paranormal things. And like, I'm always the person who's like, oh yeah, I think a yeah, ghost could exist. But at night, I'm like, no, they don't. They don't exist. They don't exist. I get into my head and I feel like it's not like something else making me scared. It's my own head. But anyway, the first story has to do with my Blackberry. Um, my Blackberry Bold. Yeah, people don't use Blackberries anymore. But I was one of the weird people who still love Blackberry, and I got a bold, and I don't regret it. Except for, you know, this one thing that happened that I'm about to tell you. So, I loved the camera on that. The quality of it was amazing. Well, maybe at the time it was amazing. But I used to just take videos all the time of Mark and I just, like, hanging out. And there was this one video that I took. And I took so many that I didn't really, you know, play them back right away. This was a good, you know, probably five months afterwards. I was just going on my phone, just looking through things. And I found this one video of us just goofing around. And I was watching it. And all of a sudden, like, I hear this weird, like, sound. And I can't really describe the sound. Um, I guess if I had to, it'd be like a demonic bark. Like if that creepy pasta smiled on, like if you could hear what it said or sounded like, it would sound like that. Just like demonic bark, growling, and it happened twice in the video. And it wasn't like if I had heard that sound, like in the video as it was happening, it would have been like one of those like, oh, what's what's that? Did you hear that? In the video. But it didn't even sound like it was part of the background. It was just like, there. And I didn't have a dog at the time. And even if, like, I'm mistaken, and we did have a dog, it would have been Kissinger. And Kissinger would have been like, still like, under two months old. So no barks or growls, just whines and squeaks. So I, I had no way of explaining like what that sound was, but like the way it made me feel when it happened, like I felt just really like worried and like cold and ugh, can't explain it, kind of washed over me. So I sent it to my best friend at the time and she agreed like, I don't know where that sound came from. It doesn't sound like it was in the background at all. It sounded like, you know, it's like right there at the forefront with me talking. And it just creeped her out. It like really creeped her out. And yeah, we just couldn't explain it. I told Mark about it and Mark's like, ah, uh, you know, I don't know. Like really digital video can't like be corrupt like that. And it's not old, so I, I don't know how to explain it. And I never showed him. Um, I was also talking to a friend at work about it, and she was like, I don't know why you still have this video, it's creepy, delete it, delete it, but I, I couldn't delete it, I don't know, like, I don't know what I expected to, you know, discover from it, I wasn't gonna send it in to anybody. So I watched again, and this time when I heard the sound, I just felt just like immediately cold all over, like there were chills, my hair was standing up on end. I don't know, I feel like a lot of you know, things, like ghostly things, it's not about like what you see, it's about how they make you feel. And so it did not make me feel good, deleted it, forgot about it. And now that I think back on it, I'm creeped out again. Whew. Creeped out. <laughs> Let's move on. So the other story was back in Vietnam when my sister and I were visiting um, our family there. We'd never been there before. It's an amazing place. I definitely recommend it. It's cheap once you get there. It's a great travel destination. 
So we were at my uh, mom's house, oh, my dad's mom's house, my grandma's house, and it's you know customary in Asian countries to you know bury your deceased like around the house in the backyard, just somewhere on the property. And I remember when I would be like close to those areas, they'd be like, "Get away from there! It's not safe." I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna question it. Like, okay, I'll keep my distance. But it was nighttime and we were sleeping. Well, I wasn't sleeping. I was awake because jet lag. Jet lag gets me good every time. But the situation, the door situation, was that it was like a you know a Dutch door sort of set up where it had frosted glass on the top and it was around 3 a.m. and I don't know, for some reason just things just started getting cold. It was cold, which is not, you know, normal for Vietnam, but like there was just a big breeze of cold and I heard this a sigh sound, and I'm like gonna try hard not to sound sexual when I recreate the sound, but it was kind of like, <sighs> and I see this woman walk by, and she has like long black hair, and she was wearing like a purple like dress. It was frosted glass, so I can't see like all the details, but it looked like one of those cultural uh, Vietnamese, I think it's called a uh, Ao Dai dresses. And there's no reason why like any of my family would have been wearing one, especially at night, because those things are hot and they have long sleeves. And so I, I don't, I knew immediately that it wasn't one of my aunts or cousins. But she walked past the the door window slowly, and like it felt like time just stopped, and I was just focusing on her. And she cleared the door, and I don't know where she was going. Like I assume if still my brain, I'm like, okay, this is one of my aunts. I don't know why she's wearing that outfit. Maybe she just looks pretty in it and wants to feel pretty but I didn't hear any footsteps or anything so I wait to listen for like some sort of door to open or like a cabinet to open there's nothing just it was almost like she was floating and then so at this point I'm kind of like terrified but I'm not like shaking terrified but I'm more calm about it, and I wait for her to like reappear. And nothing. I was up for a good hour after that, and it was like, I don't know, came by, and that's it. And I didn't tell my sister or anybody else about this because I don't want to freak anyone out. Like I don't want to make it a big deal, and I didn't feel like, you know, I didn't feel fear. So, I'm pretty sure that was a ghost, but obviously it wasn't like a hostile ghost that didn't come get me, but I just thought, you know, thought I'd share, and, <laughs> well, I've never come like face to face with the ghost, like I think that would be just terrifying, just right here, just like, Aah! no, I, I hope that never happens. That, that'd be so bad. But those are my experiences. I mean, I have other stories too, but I thought those would be kind of fun to share during Halloween. And I'd love to hear some of your stories. Because, I don't know, I feel like listening to ghost stories is way more scarier than, more scary than, like, you know, those ghost hunter shows. Like, those aren't scary to me. Like, really getting into it, getting the details. I don't know. Harry makes for good campfire stories. Oh yeah, um, happy Halloween again. Stay safe, eat lots of candy. If you're watching from Portland, I hope you're having an awesome time. Please go to a cool Halloween party and tell me all about it. I miss you guys. All right, have a great day. Bye.